new message. I know I can count on you. You're the only one I trust. All my life, I believe there's a link between the ancient civilizations of the Egyptians, Mayan, the Anasazi, and the lost city of Atlantis. For the past 20 years, I've traveled the globe in search of Atlantis. Through it all, I've endured the endless ridicule of my colleagues. Now, finally, I've found that missing link. On Easter Island, I've discovered what appears to be some sort of alien device. In it, I can see worlds from the past, brilliant scenes flowing by like clouds. Whatever it is, it definitely is not man-made. If I'm right, and this device is a time gate, then this may be the greatest archaeological discovery of all time. Tomorrow, I'll attempt to activate the time portal and go through it. I don't know what will happen to me when I try this. Please, hurry. I need your help. You must come at once to Easter Island. You're the only one I trust. Well, my friend Alexander asked me to arrive, so I did. I'm gratified that despite my skepticism of his theories, he still considers me a close enough friend to tell me he is about to jump into a time machine. I am worried he may be going off the deep end now, but if it turns out he's right, I'm even more worried that given how much he wants to prove his theories, he's probably gonna do something incredibly stupid and dangerous. I've never been on Easter Island, I should probably spend some time taking in the sights. I can only hope he isn't in any immediate danger. You didn't have to fly away, I was gonna pet you. Oh well. Wait, what's that glint? Oh, someone lost their camera. Down there. I should take it. And it still has some film in it. It's mine now. Now I can take a selfie of myself with that moai over there. How do I handle this camera? I'm so spoiled and used to phone cameras. I can take a selfie with that Moai, right? Wait, is that a journal? Is that the Moai's journal? He keeps journals? Well, I've heard they say they walk, but never that they keep journals. Oh, this is Professor Nicole's journal. Why would he leave it here instead of at a campsite or something? Did he finally flip and want to show the Moai what he discovered? What did he discover anyway? There's a lot of pages in here talking about Egypt, Maya, Atlantis, and Asazi, and the first entries talk about here. Let's read what he has to say about his trip here first. Feel free to come with me in reading the journal and discussing some of its implications. I always feel that Moe is going to get up and start walking whenever I look at them. Ah, oh, well, that's just a paranoia I have. So if, if Professor Nichols is gone, and... Yeah, that means it's only the only clues we have to find this... Ugh, don't creep me out, Moai statue. To find this Time Gate or Stargate thing is going to be at his campsite. He, he said that the cave containing it was close by. Oh my gosh, this is really eerie, seeing all those Moai statues staring at me. It's like they're mocking me. Or possibly I'm paranoid. Yeah, well, at least now I am here with the cool, windy embrace of the ocean soul. Yeah. 
Yikes. That one looks like it's facing the other direction. It's got its head facing the backwards to me. Doesn't want to see me. Fine, then. Let's talk to the ones over here who are considerably taller. They're out looking at the ocean, which is a rather pretty ocean, I must admit. This is a nice beach and a nice ocean. I think I could just take in the sights and not worry about the fact that my friend is probably in very grave danger. I'm a horrible friend. Oh my gosh, we found one! That's one of those rare uh, 2D pace crabs I hear so often about. It's a native to Easter Island. Its weird appearance makes it look like it looks the same no matter which angle you look at it at. It's, it's, it's like, it's like it's one dimension down from us. I'm so glad I got to see one of those. They are so rare. Hey, there's a fish at the bottom of this. Hey, there's a fish in the belly of it. Did you really have to invent an extruding stone thing, ancient alien people, just to put a fish? Wait, shouldn't I be freaked out or something? Anyway, the, the professor talked to devices with higher than expected technology. I guess this is one of them. Perhaps extruding out stone is just... Wait. Those two fish look very different. Okay, that looks more like the Rapa Nui writing. And that looks like a sickle with two dots inside of it. The lack of curves on that sickle probably means it isn't a very good sickle. And this one, this one is a person sitting down cross-legged. Perhaps she is paying respect to the Moai, or more likely um, she's just sitting there with her hands outstretched as if she's waiting for something. Or maybe she's asking for her ear back. That, that looks like an ear. Thinking about that, those, those stone extrusions didn't look like Rapa Nui writing. I wonder what they were. Okay, the campsite. Ah, oh, and it looks like you got all your cooking stuff here in a nice cooking stuff box. Makes sense. Yep, he's not here. <laughs> and my worry level doubles. Alright. What have you got for me here? You've got beer. Uh, uh, I don't like beer, but I can understand you want something to take the edge off of you. you got bug powder, bug spray, bug repellent. Oh, wait a minute. There's a giant Rongo Rongo board right in front of me. That's probably important. Wait a minute, hold on. This, this Rongo Rongo board has the same, give me the same vibe as the Moai statues. If you look carefully, it appears that they, in the middle, there is a, I guess you could say, monkey or, or some kind of like monkey-ish animal in the standard Rapa Nui way they might write it. And then there's one nearby that looks more refined and, and more, um, I'm not sure, I wouldn't say refined, but just. It doesn't look like it's the same style as the other symbol. Okay, it's hard to see. Let's do this the archaeologist's way and take a, ourselves a sample, won't we? Put the construction paper over and then trace with the pencil. Is that a little bit more pressure to those symbols I was talking to earlier? It would appear that this is the Rosetta Stone that uh, he was talking about. We see the monkey demonstrates the most clear. It's quite clearly in one form, and then it's in an other, another form. Like two different cultures' ways of writing the same concept. All right, so we have a pairing of each of these writings. Like some kind of pairing between the Rapa Nui language and this other language. And oh my gosh, don't stick the knife into the table. That is bad, scary, terrifying. Now I'm really worried. I'm glad you got the Healy bandages on the lower left side to grab you and patch you up. 
<laughs> oh, matches! I love fire. Never know when I need to burn something down. Ooh. Oh, here's some lantern instructions. All right. Um, pump the gas tank ten times. Turn the prior valve to the up position. Open a gas knob to the up position. Carefully light the mantle with a lighted match. Once lantern starts up, turn the prior valve down and keep out of reach of children. Okay, that's going to be hard. If there's any children on this island, we might as well just give up now because step six is going to be a virtual impossibility. I really hope there aren't any children around because I just picked up matches and there's a knife sticking out of the table. I think, given the available information, we can safely assume that there are no unruly youngsters around, so let's not worry about failing step six. Capers. You left everything out. You really left in a hurry, didn't you? Whoa, splash danger, splash danger. Gotta be careful, Gotta, don't wanna get my clothes all wet. I especially don't want my matches to get wet, otherwise it's gonna put a real damper in my pyromania. Oh no, a dark cave, I don't wanna go in there. Um, but this is probably the cave he was talking about. The Cave of Glowing Light seems to be out right now. Oh, that's the, the Collins Gas Lantern that I saw earlier in those instructions. I sure hope I remember those instructions. Maybe I should just poke my head in the dark cave for just a split second. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Forbidden darkness holds a timeless light. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's quite helpful. It, it's nice to know the scary disembodied voice sounds less like they're trying to scare me and more like they're trying to guide me. Wait, wait, hold on. Who said that? <sighs> oh, okay, I'm going to light this lantern, and then I want you to say that to my face. O although I guess it won't be relevant anymore since I will already have the timeless light, uh, assuming this company makes good lanterns. All right. Instructions. Pump the pump ten times. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and this one goes up to eleven. All right, gas knob needs to go up. Primer valve over there needs to go up. Light the match. Burn myself. Great. I feel like I forgot a step though. Oh, well. It's working. Oh, fuck it. Broke. Oh, right. It. I didn't keep this away from children. Oh, and I'm technically a child according to everyone who watches how I behave. That's why it didn't work. Or if I calm down a notch, perhaps I can just forget to turn the primer valve to the weight. Where the hell did my matches go? I, I must have dropped them. Where are they? Wait, wait, where? Where? Okay. Maybe there's more at the camp. Maybe there's more at the camp. And, um, if I can find them... I can... Okay, maybe there's more at the place that I found them before. Wait, th wait, they're in the same place they were when I found them earlier. How did... Oh, right, of course. I dropped them when I burnt myself. Then they bounced off the sand. The wave crash carried them off, but then beached them again when they had enough momentum to keep bouncing off the very bouncy sand. It landed on the table, which, thanks to an insanely infinitely improbable set of coincidences landed exactly in the same place I found them originally. That is known as physics. Alright, let's... Don't whistle at me. Don't shh me. Oh, I should probably turn the, um... Eh. Get out of my way. I should probably turn the gas knob down and the primer valve down before I pump it. Okay, it's shooting me now, so I think I have it. Right, turn the primer valve up. Light the match. Turn it on. Turn the primer valve down. 
dropped the matches. They probably bounced all the way back to where they were before because physics. And now the cave is lit. Congratulations. The, what the? Okay, there's no way the lantern is lighting this entire cave. Light bouncing, optics, physics, they don't work like that. Is this like a mini sun? Is that why I needed the match? If this company makes timeless light like this, they deserve their monopoly. Oh wait, I'm in a cave. This looks like one, this looks like a, a magma cave. Oh, now there's a scary face looking at me. Oh, you must be the one who gave me the advice earlier. You were absolutely right, that lantern is a timeless light. Very convenient. I like you, face, and you are my new best friend. Looks like I'm gonna have to find replacement friends soon anyway. Oh, that skull is very foreboding indeed. Oh, well, we got another face up ahead that's, that's more scary than the other face. We've got three other statues here, and this looks like a photograph of that entry mechanism the professor was talking about. Those are Rapa Nui symbols on their shoulders. Oh, that's creepy. Wait, how many heads are there? Enough already. This one looks like he isn't feeling too well. Why don't you just open up wide and say, ah, and then I'll go ahead and take your temperature. Okay, I wasn't actually expecting him to do that, but I'm pretty sure he's more ill than I thought he was. At this point, I can say there is a high fever with a case of facial lava molds, more medically referred to as molten pyrexia impressions. Those eyes, though, they look like the other set of symbols, the non Rapa Nui ones. Yeah, these are the Rapa Nui symbols, and then the face. contains that sickle and two eyes, which was mapping to that Rongo Rongo. Ow, 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 I burn, ouch. I burned myself touching that. How was I supposed to know that the lava was hot? I mean, I'm standing right next to it and I haven't burned to death yet. So I guess if physics of optics can be bent by a lantern that acts like a floodlight on every nook and cranny of this cave, I guess the physics of thermodynamics can also go sawed off. Wait, what's in that bowl up there? Okay, it contains water that cools the head off, apparently including the back of it touching the lava, so now I can grab it. I am just going to assume that automatically refills on the basis that automatically refilling wouldn't actually make any sense, so at this point in my life, it's likely to be true. So, the, st the statues want these faces. This is asking us to pair heads with the right symbols. But... I do what I please. If I want to place a head where it doesn't match... Then that is my right. So we know the sickle and two eyes maps to the two eyes. But what if I put the wrong thing in the wrong place? Okay, not sure how that underwent complete molecular disintegration, but whoever designed this locking mechanism was picky. For my own safety, I probably shouldn't try to stand on their hands or put any of my belongings there. Can I get the can I get the head back, please? Oh, I can get different heads. Changing the eyes allows me to get different heads. So, okay, change the eye to the right head. Map the head based on the, um, I'm gonna call it, um, other form of writing to its Rosetta Stoned translation in the Rapa Nui language, and the entry mechanism should work. Can I put these back, actually? I want to do another one first. I don't want to do this one first. You, you go, go back, go back, go back. All right, let's do this for real this time. 
Okay, that looks like the ear. And if I remember my story correctly, it was a person sitting cross-legged that was under the Moai statue for the ear. So I believe it's the one on the far left. All right, next up. This one's hard to remember. If I get if I get a hard one wrong, I don't want to lose like every all my other progress. Let's do that one first. The eye nose thing that went with the you, yeah, you. What else is there? Um, fish. Now the fish is super, super easy. Um, it looks like a fish that I would draw if I didn't want to draw a fish. And that looks like a fish if I wanted to draw a fish. Right. The sickle and two eyes goes with the two eyes that are over there. All we are left with is a snake and the monkey. Well, that settles that one. We're doing the monkey first. I always felt that this is kind of like a cognate. A word that sounds similar to the word it actually means in another language. Um, because both of them look very similar like monkeys. And the snake going around the pole. The pole dancing snake goes to the snake that's not pole dancing. All right. I'm assuming that sound means something worked. Oh, the eyes are glowing. It makes it even more creepy. Of course. What happens if I touch it? I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I've already had enough weird stuff happen today. Maybe this, like, slides out of the way like a door or something. <laughs> I'm not even surprised. I've seen Stone do weirder things today. And... Okay. The Time Gate. Is this part of the cave? This doesn't, it looks like I'm in another dimension actually. Like this room isn't actually physically here. Like when I'm, yeah, when I move forward, the rest of the room doesn't seem to move with me. It's like some kind of alternate relative dimension in space. Anyway, um, whoa. Here's the orb of time travel. Um. Let's, uh, let's, um... Let's fuck with it. Whoa! Alex? Thank God, you've come at last! Goddess, please, I'm My old-fashioned My situation is desperate. I'm trapped, imprisoned in this timeless dimension. I must have found my journal, my camera. Did you see the photographs I took? There are few, I know, but study them. They prove the wondrous discoveries I made are real and far beyond even my wildest dreams. This won't be easy to understand. I don't fully comprehend it myself, but this device is a transportal, a gate through time itself. I learned to travel freely among these ancient worlds, and so can you. For 20 years, I've theorized a link between the ancient civilizations, much to the amusement of my colleagues. Now, my life's work will be vindicated. Please, do your best to reach me. You'll come to believe the unbelievable, 
not only about the ancients, but about the very nature of mankind. Now that's dedication. He's trapped in who knows where, and his biggest concern is that his theories don't go to waste. Look, I need to get you out of there. I theorized about time travel, of course, and considered it impossible, well beyond any present or future technology. How ironic that I should stumble upon it at an archaeological site. As I pondered the origin of the time gates, I began to see truth in the mythology of the past. Yes, truth, mythology of the past, I understand. But if you just hear me out, I want you to understand we have a small problem. And you're missing the headline here. You're trapped! Why? How? Look, no offense, but I don't want to end up like that. Yeah, your journals do talk about visits to this time machine in other times and other lands, so I guess this must work, and traveling through time would give me a good excuse for getting out of that meeting tomorrow. Let's give it a try. Okay, that button doesn't work. Middle button doesn't work. Let's try the other one. Okay, far right button doesn't work. Oh my gosh, one of them must be the return recall device, but one of these other ones has to work. Let's try the one on the far left. It looks like some kind of scarab. Okay, that is clearly Egypt. I recognize this place. A uh, dead tree, a bunch of rocks. The mesa is okay. I think this might actually be okay. Can't be Maya. In the process of elimination, that's probably Anasazi. All right, and this one. All right, trees and ziggurats. Pretty sure that this is Maya. I am going to assume since the professor's stuff made it back, even if he didn't, that this place and time period must be locked into the time gate somehow. So I guess one of the buttons that wasn't working might have been a button for here. So I should be able to return. And given his stuff wasn't there when he himself was searching, it probably means the temporal connection is relative. So like if five seconds pass on one time gate, five seconds must pass on the other. Otherwise, you'd have all kinds of paradoxes and transportation nightmares on top of the ones you already have. But if that's the case, aren't these cultures going to still be long gone? I, I mean, if the Time Gate was created several hundred years ago with the Rapa Nui, that, that means that by now, hundreds of years have passed. So if the Time Gates are linked temporally, hundred years of years must have also passed for the civilization, so they must be broken down now, but the professor's journal's talking... You know what? If you don't understand this timey-wimey stuff, there is a dashing adventurer who travels in time and space that can explain it to you. The whole space-time continuum concept is actually quite simple. You see, Gage, space and time are actually just floating along in a big lava lamp. Okay. Egypt is first, because I happen to like Egypt. So let's set the space-time lava lamp to Egypt and burn our hand. 